Talk about the past 10 months and how you've approached your recovery from the knee injury last year. The the past 10 months have been, first of all, it's been long, but uh, it's it's really rewarding right now. Um, the rehab process was definitely strenuous. It was every single day, treatment, rehab, and uh, it got really tiring and it got, and it got really old, but to see where I was and see where I kind of am now is, is amazing. Just to know at one point I couldn't walk and now uh, I'm back sprinting, if anything, a little bit faster than I was. And um, I'm just extremely blessed to be in this situation right now and I'm looking forward to bigger things. How has your perspective changed since that injury, especially on the quarterback position? Mm -hmm. The I mean, the quarterback position and really just football in general, uh, you just got to take advantage of what you have. and. Like, it's, like you never really know when it's going to be your last time and thankfully it's not my last time but uh, you never know when it's going to happen at the same time and um, really you just got to make the most out of every opportunity and that's that's kind of like my perspective of football and, and kind of the rest of life so uh, it was it was definitely it was definitely a, a mind changing and, and kind of heart changing experience and it was uh, it was more beneficial than it was negative. Give me one or two aspects of your game you're looking to improve this year. Uh, for me, it's it's a lot more decision making, and uh, I think I talked about it a little bit last year. But uh, now uh, I've had a little bit more experience, at least during the summer, to to kind of get out and, and work through some new things with the receivers and make them think a little bit more as far as attacking different defenses. So uh, that's one thing, and then the other one is uh, is being a little bit smarter with the football, and that's not necessarily being smart as in turnovers and, and all that because we were pretty good last year, but uh, being smart as, as in throwing to the right guys at the right time and uh, being on time. So uh, I think if we can improve in those two areas, we're, we're definitely going to take advantage of defenses. I think you touched on this a little bit, but will fans see you play differently because of the injuries you had last year? I think, uh, if anything, they'll see me play a little bit more cerebrally, if that's a word, and uh, really just just trying to think a little bit more in, in order to give my guys the best chance to, to have a successful play. But uh, other than that, no, I, I can't really change too much just because, if I mean, it's kind of who I am and it's kind of what's been working for this team. So, uh, I mean, if it's not broke, don't fix it. <laughs> what's the mindset of the team heading into this season following last year's success? I, you know, I just expectations outside the program, heading into this new conference, People weren't sure where Utah State was going to finish. Obviously, you guys exceeded expectations. So what's the mindset here this season? I'd say the mindset is, is really positive. Just keep working. And uh, we've, seen, we've seen where we came from, and we've seen kind of where we're going. But we haven't, we're nowhere near close to our end goal yet. But we're still, uh, we're still striving to make the, the foundation as solid as possible. And I think uh, one of those big steps is, is to win one of these so-called big games. And in this case, it would be Tennessee and BYU. And, um, and I think if we can find a way to get that done, then that's really going to change the, not only the mindset, but just the expectations of what Utah State football is. And uh, I think we have the leadership. I think we have the, the experience to do it. We've all been in close games. And sadly, we've come up short more than we've won. But uh, we. We, as most of our players and most of our seniors, know what it takes to, to make that extra push in, uh, in order to get a win. You get one of those games, then the nation starts to talk about Utah State again like it did several years ago in Auburn. You guys were very mm. close to Auburn. Talk about your offensive line. Just one lone returning starter from last season. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I really have a, lot of, uh, I have a lot of confidence in this offensive line, which uh, seems a little bit crazy, but... Uh, I'll tell you what, two years ago we said the same thing because all we had was Tyler Larson coming back. So um, I, I definitely take a lot of uh, inspiration in what we did that season into this upcoming season. And I understand that Kevin Wimpy is not the same person, much less the same position as Tyler Larson, but uh, Kevin has the same leadership qualities and he's been pushing the other offensive linemen to, uh, to really improve every single day. And um, uh, I think we're definitely going to be able to uh, make a imp uh, big impact uh, on the offensive line. As a quarterback, what is it like going up against your defense in practice? In practice, it's not fun, but whenever we go into a game and we feel like we've played a little bit tougher of a defense during, uh, during practice, it gives us a little bit of a sigh of relief at, at one point. 
but then it shows us that uh, we've been improving against our defense so now we can kind of show off what we've been working and uh really going against our defense makes us improve it pushes us every single day there's i don't think there's ever going to be a day in this training camp where we're not going to have to compete and uh really be on top of our uh on top of our game but uh for me and, and some of the other guys we're, we're looking forward to it because the competition is what makes us Utah State and, uh, and the fact that we're hardworking and we never stop fighting. So uh, I'm definitely looking forward to kind of getting back after them and hopefully we can get a lot of, a lot of wins against our defense this, uh, this upcoming month. Something else to look forward to is that opener against Tennessee, mm -hmm. 100,000 plus. If you're watching the Aggies play at Neyland Stadium. What are your thoughts on that? Does that uh, must get you excited? It gets me excited more just to start up a new season. Uh, yeah, it is Tennessee, but in my eyes, it's, it's another opponent. And uh, I think that's kind of the, the perspective we're taking as a team, just because we can't put any one team on a pedestal. Yeah, there is only one, uh, only one kind of objective, but at the same time, we can't, we can't make them the biggest thing known to man, uh, because if we do that, we're kind of defeating ourselves before the game starts. So uh, we just have to approach it like it's another game and uh, continue to fight through the entire four quarters. One guy you think is going to have a monster year on offense? Um, on offense, I, I'd say Brandon Swindle. He's, uh, it's his second year of really getting some good time. He, uh, well, it's his third year playing uh, uh, at Utah State, really. And uh, he, he definitely showed he has a lot of potential last year. But last year, he wasn't even the go-to guy. And I think he had six touchdowns or something like that. Or he, he had a decent amount of touchdowns. So um, I think uh, he definitely had that experience, and he's going to step up a little bit more this upcoming year, and uh, I'm looking forward to big things out of him. For the second year in a row, Utah State is promoting you for the Heisman. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. Uh, first of all, it's, it's an honor to be represented uh, and being able to represent this great university. And um, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing to me that the entire school can kind of get behind such such an idea like this because I know other schools are thinking it's crazy, he doesn't have a chance, but uh, I know with the people that are on this team and the supporting pieces I have, it's definitely possible to, to do some big things, but it's really all about wins at the end of the day, and I think everything else will kind of handle itself. But uh, right now it's, it's just a watch list, and that's really how I take it, but um, uh, I know that they're not going to hand me a Heisman Trophy during training camp, so now is whenever we uh, kind of set all the all the pieces into motion and uh, kind of get it underway, really. This is kind of where the campaign starts in my eyes. It'll be good because you know the program's going to have success mm -hmm. if you're in New York and if you get the Heisman Trophy, you know. Yeah, definitely. Good uh, things for the Aggies. It's, it's just, uh, for me, it's just amazing to, to be able to represent a school on such a big stage like this, knowing where this program came from because I know years ago this never happened. So... Uh, I'm definitely blessed to be in this position, and uh, I'm I'm happy to be able to represent the school. Any significance with jersey number 16? <sighs> Not at all, sadly. I, <laughs> I mean, I have a lot of stories I could say. Like, I'm a big Raiders fan, so Jim Plunkett wore 16. But um, when I was in high school, I, I started playing varsity my sophomore year, and I was cur I was originally number 10, and uh, I was going to wear number 10, but the punter had number 10, so. Uh, so it's uh, it was, that was definitely a humbling experience, but I mean, I've, I've tried to do the best for the number 16 and uh, I definitely wear it with a lot of pride. And um, my, my other companion, Tavares McMillan, wears it as well. And uh, it's kind of like, for us, it's really kind of like we have a standard to live up to every single time we put on the number. So uh, that's, that's definitely how I take it now. Final question, a message for Aggie fans. Message for all Aggie fans, come out to the game, support us. Don't ever lose faith. We may have one down minute, and uh, we've had a couple in the summer and, and in the past, but uh, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel, and, uh, and we're right on it. So uh, come out, support, go Aggies.